Hey guys, Sam with Fox Airsoft, and today we're going to do another versus video. It's going to be a comparison between two handguns that are popular, the 1911 and the Glock series pistols. Those are both from Elite Force. I'll compare them both in a general way and then go into the little nuances of each platform. Let's start with the ever popular 1911 series. This is a very old design, very popular because of the ergonomic design, it's way ahead of its time. And uh, in terms of airsoft, very popular because it's a very uh, easy to find pistol and everyone likes it because it's full metal. This is the Elite Force one, the 1911 TAC. This has a tactical rail. If you get the more standard 1911, it's gonna have a smooth bottom there, just like the old school. 1911s from World War II. On the TAC model as well, you also have an ambidextrous safety here, which only can be activated with the hammer cocked. When you want to pull the trigger, you have to squeeze this part, which is known as the grip safety. Depressing the grip safety will allow the uh, trigger to be pulled. It also prevents the hammer from being dropped if you get anything caught in there and you don't intentionally depress this. Also on the 1911 TAC, you have front and rear slide serration. So you can rack the slide from two different locations depending on how you want to grab it. It's very easy with gloves and so on because the serrations are very wide. So it's very easy to get a good purchase on it. The traditional 1911 will usually have just the serrations on the back and they'll be a bit finer. Next, you have a three dot combat sight system very traditional three white dots. Compared to your standard 1911, it'll probably probably be blacked out, very crude by comparison, but still usable. Then on the TAC model, you have a threaded barrel here that's 14 millimeters counterclockwise. You can add your favorite tracer unit or mock suppressor. Don't put anything too heavy on it, otherwise the slide won't cycle when you shoot it. Here you have the magazine release. It's meant for right-handed shooters. That'll drop the magazine freely and then you'll have your single stack magazine. Single stack implies that on the real firearm, the bullets in the magazine are stacked in a single row. That makes the gun overall slimmer and easier to grip compared to a double stack magazine. Now, a lot of uh, guns, if you hold the 1911 compared to a Glock or a Beretta or something like that, feel very chunky in your hands. A lot of people gravitate towards the 1911 because of its comfort. Lastly, you have your slide lock or slide release here it's uh, textured you can hit it with your left hand if you're a right hander or you can just do it single-handed by breaking your grip just a little bit on this elite force one here this is a co2 model so you get to use 12 gram co2 cartridges and it holds about 14 rounds or more not a whole lot but still pretty good okay so this is the elite force glock here manufactured by VFC is their OEM. First thing you'll notice if you pick one up is it's pretty light by comparison to a 1911. That is because Glocks, both real and airsoft, will have the metal slide with a polymer frame. This is to provide a good uh, weight reduction and make it comfortable for carry. Maybe some other brands might use a plastic slide, but this Elite Force one does a metal slide and barrel combination. So the appeal of the Glock for a lot of people, especially like law enforcement and so on, is the simplicity, a lot of people enjoy that and uh, it kind of translates over to the airsoft version as well. So starting with the features, it's a striker fired on the real one. This one has no external hammer. So to cock it, you just pull the slide back and it's ready to go. You have a trigger here with the built-in little bar that prevents you from pulling it if you don't have a complete wrap around the trigger. You have on here a wider grip to accommodate a larger magazine. The magazine release on this Gen 3 style Glock is on the left-hand side. So if you're a right-hander, that's naturally where it's gonna be. You might have to rotate your grip a little bit since a double stack gun is a little bit wider than a 1911. But even then, you might still have to do that. You have slide serrations just on the back here. They're very wide, but functional. You have a plastic sighting system here, just like on the real thing. It has a simple dot and a u-shaped notch on the back so that you can put the circle in between the boxes your slide release or slide lock is on the left hand side so it's suited for right-handed shooter very easy to reach but also very small so that you don't uh, accidentally hit it while you are manipulating the pistol magazine is going to be a double stack as mentioned they typically hold about 24 rounds or so 
Now these Elite Force ones, you can get them in two flavors, green gas or CO2. If you wanna find out more about the differences between that, watch your other videos on gas guns. For the Elite Force Glocks in particular, the base plate hides the fill mechanism for the green gas. It's hidden in the base plate here. You just have to pull the little things to release the detent and then slide the plate off and you can access the green gas. If you have a CO2 model, you pretty much put it into the side and crank a key with the Allen key that's included. You also have a very simple single slotted light rail here that's Picatinny or something to that nature that you can mount a flashlight to just like the 1911 TAC. On the Glock, you lack an external thread out of the box compared to the 1911 TAC. So if you are looking to mount something right away out of the box, there are not as much options to do that with this yet. All right, so let's compare the two. Let's start with the weight. That's the most obvious one. When you pick up the Glock or the 1911, you're gonna feel the weight difference right away. A lot of people gravitate towards the 1911 as the first gun because it feels more substantial in your hands because it's full metal and the price is good. With the Glock, it's gonna be a little bit more expensive because it's a licensed product, but also um, people might like the lighter weight of it or prefer a lighter weight gun overall, especially after they played for a bit and running around with something like this strapped to your holster versus this you might appreciate the lighter weight here. As far as ergonomics go, 1911 I think wins as far as how it feels in my hands. The Glock is a little bit more blocky. However, uh, function wise, they both serve the same purpose. They both shoot BBs in our case, and they work great. If you're concerned about ergonomics, look at the 1911. For sights, kind of a draw here. I feel like they're both pretty good, get pretty good contrast. The dots on the 1911, certainly uh, stand out pretty well as well as the U-notch here. If you have the old school 1911 where it's all blacked out, uh, I would say the Glock has better sights. The trigger, how they feel on both of them, feels pretty good. 1911 being a single action with the hammer fired has a very short pull and it's very light, so it very, feels very positive. On a Glock, it's a little bit more mushy, just like the real thing, although ironically, the Airsoft Glock trigger feels better than the real thing in my opinion, but uh, that's just me. For the controls, you'll notice I didn't mention anything about a safety on the Glock. The whole reason that the Glock's very popular is it's safe action that's patented. It's built into the trigger here. You basically can't fire the gun unless you intentionally pull the trigger, so there's no external safety for you to activate. So in a very tense or stressful situation, if you have to grab a pistol and fire, there's less for you to think about as far as getting this gun ready to go and firing it. So that's translated over to Airsoft as well. So if you appreciate simplicity, this is where it's at. The Glock is gonna win here. The 1911 has a slight learning curve with the controls because it's very unique to the 1911. So there's a bit more you have to do when you're running around with this thing. Ideally, when you are carrying this Airsoft gun ready to play in the field, you'll have the hammer back and the safety on. So when you draw it, you're gonna take your safety off and then pull the trigger. More steps, so if you are worried about complicating your life, maybe don't do the 1911. Next is the capacity of the magazines. As I said, the wider magazine of the Glock and other similar pistols will put you in the 24 round range, give or take. And also, by the way, you have an extended option on this guy if you want run a Glock 18 magazine uh, versus the single stack of the 1911, which is only 14 rounds. You do have a 27 round option for an extendo, but it makes the gun have a huge magazine sticking out the bottom. So not ideal, but at least the options there. So if you're going straight for out of the box capacity without extended magazines, the Glock wins by far. Last thing I want to mention, if you've ever shot either of these guns, they both kick pretty well. You might feel it more in the 1911 because it's a heavier gun, but it's very satisfying. In the Glock, it feels it's all in the upper half of the gun because the slide is metal, but it feels very quick and precise. So the the blowback function feels very good in this gun as well. All right, guys, that's uh, gonna do it for us today. If you gravitate towards trademark Glocks, this is the one to get. Be sure to look for that on our website. If you like the feel of a heavy pistol that just uh, is really fun to manipulate and shoot, then the 1911 is the one you're gonna like. I personally like them both, so it's a very hard decision for me. That's up to you to decide what works best for you. We have both of them available on our website. We have them in our starter kit section as well in case you want to get this as your first pistol or this one as your first pistol. I'm Tank from Fox Airsoft. I will see you guys in the next video.